Fidelity is down about 1%. You saw that uh, ARC is down about 5%. In the first 30 minutes of the session, all 11 of them saw trading crossing a total of $1.2 billion in volume. You see Wisdom Tree, Franklin, Invesco, six of those ETFs trading on the SIBO. And that's where we find one of our floor show traders, Prosper Academy's Scott Bauer, and live with me on the floor of the Las Vegas Convention Center at CES, Carnivore Trading's Dutch Masters. All right, great to have you all. Uh, I'm, I'm going to call an audible here and go with you, Scott. We're just wondering if Bitcoin is up, why are so many of these fresh and brand new ETFs down? What's going on? Sure. So what happened is when these got launched this morning, Bitcoin was already up, you know, a couple thousand bucks on the day or so. In fact, Bitcoin hit a high of four, just over 49,000 today. So those first prints that we saw this morning for in the Fidelity and, and the ARK Invest and all of these ETFs, they were higher than they are now because we've seen the market sell off a little bit. Bitcoin went from 49 down to, let's call it, you know, 46, 8 or close to 47. Now, so that's why we're seeing, you know, a negative number, if you will, in these ETFs. The bottom line is, though, especially the ones here at the SIBO, the Fidelity one, uh, the Ark Invest, the Van Eck, they are trading with massive, massive volume. The Fidelity one has over 15 million in volume. The Ark over 5 million in volume. So, you know, the the reception, at least on day one here, has been robust. I would expect that to continue. Continue. And I think what's going to be very interesting is down the line and maybe not so far off in the future here, perhaps watch for options to be traded on some of these ETFs. Options. Okay, so as we watch all of that, let's bring in Dutch Masters here. Dutch, I don't know, the Dow is starting to wobble a little bit. Now it's just up five points. Give me a sense right here of what the market really wants, because we got the CPI number. It's not exactly a, a drop of dramatic proportions. The market's like a toddler that wants a cookie, another one. Is it going to get it with a rate cut? You know, I, I, I think the market is expecting that rate cut uh, in March a little bit. And, and I, I just don't think they're going to get it. I think we're going to have a little bit of sticky inflation. And and I, I hope the market, I mean, you see it shaking off these numbers right now. I just hope it can continue to do that. And, and you look at treasuries. Okay, treasury yields have yeah. been, it's almost like a jump ball today, up, down, all around, right. which really indicates nobody knows what's going to happen. That said, let's talk equities. Yeah. That's your bailiwick. Oh, Tell yeah. me exactly what you're buying and selling right now. Well, you know, uh, the, we had a good couple couple of weeks at the beginning of the year, Liz, with uh, the biotech stocks, and uh, I see a real shift happening back to the big workhorses, the big tech stocks right now, and uh, we're pretty excited about some of those stocks. We do like some heavy growth stocks. GCT is one that has pulled back high from about 26 and change. That's Giga Cloud Technology. Yeah, that's right. Giga Cloud Technology, which our uh, resident genius, uh, Trader Z, says he thinks that eventually that stock's going to be at hundred dollars and it's at 20 bucks today. You got some consumer names in there like Elf and Google. Oh yeah, Black. so what we really like is the theme that if we are going to have a difficult environment from the economy going forward that, you know, you have to have demand for your product and we think that Elf, which is in the beauty business, Lululemon, which of course, you know, women look at and say, hey, I, and men now too say, hey, that's, that's my brand. I love that. They really don't have a problem with the pricing, so we love so we like those. I know I know they're very expensive, right? <laughs> well, that's what you want. You want a company that has that moat of competitiveness where people will pay for that particular uh, product. Scott Bauer, uh, give me a sense of the volatility because right now it's almost non-existent and it continues to be so. How long does that last with the overall markets when we're flat on the Dow at the moment, but 20 points of gains, we're at another record? Yeah, it's very subdued, Liz. In fact, right behind me in the S&P 500 options pit here, if you look at at the money implied vol for tomorrow, it is a little bit extended. That's because we've got the PPI number coming out tomorrow. So it's about, you know, 12, 13%, but that plummets. If you go out to next week and we do have a holiday on Monday, that's down in single digits. That is very, very low in the SPX. That correlates what we're seeing in the VIX now, the, the January 
Treasury future, which expires next Wednesday, is trading right about 13. Certainly not as low as it has been, but the market is very complacent right now. You guys were talking about, Dutch was talking about the, how you know the Fed is probably not looking at the six moves that the market is anticipating. Something has to converge together here, and I believe that we're going to see vol starting to tick up right after the beginning of earnings season here as we get a little bit more uncertainty and get closer to that March decision on whether we're really going to see interest rates come down at all. So I think vol is probably bottomed out here. You know, maybe we can see a tick or two lower. I wouldn't be surprised to see both the VIX and volatility in the SPX start ticking up. Uh, NASDAQ has a lot of tech winners, Dutch, and uh, we know one of the big winners today, Microsoft. It, for a hot minute, became, yeah. it overtook Apple as the largest company I on know. planet Earth, and then it toggled back to slightly below. What's your biggest position in tech? So our biggest position in tech right now is uh, cyber, is CYBR, CyberArk software, uh, CYBR, and uh, uh, we, it's, uh, it, it's um, you know, it's, it's cybersecurity software. Another thing that we think that companies look at as a necessity and not a luxury. Yeah. They have to do it. Yeah, and the federal government has a big wallet. They're spending a lot on that, oh, too. Yeah. Dutch is here with us in Vegas. Yes. This is where Carnivore is based. Oh, this is, what is this, Velociraptor? <laughs> what the heck is that? We like our alligator boots here. Oh, I am my jealous gosh. of you guys. Gotta Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, Dutch, uh, wonderful right. to see you. Thank Good you so you. very much.